Today, we're going to look at Komodo Container Manager. This is going to be in direct competition to things like Dockage, Fortainer, Arcane, and a few other options out there. But this by far has got to be the most comprehensive free container manager I've ever seen. Today, we're going to deploy it on TrueNest, and I'm going to show you how to do complicated things like import your existing stacks to be managed by Komodo. Let's jump right in. Starting with my TrueNest dashboard, I'm going to go over here and jump into the data sets tab because we have to make some data sets for Komodo. In my case, I'm going to use my tank configs data set, and I'm going to click the big blue add data set button here to add a sub data set to configs. I'm going to call it Komodo and I'm going to leave the data preset as generic and hit save. Now when I scroll down, I will see Komodo has been added, but this isn't where we need to stop. We need to keep going. Komodo needs a few sub data sets as well. To know which sub data sets I need, I'm going to jump over to the wiki and type in Komodo and go directly to the Komodo page. From here, I'm going to scroll down and follow the steps under section one, deploy Komodo under the TrueNAS tab. And here on step three, I can see I need to set these sub data sets to host path. So I'm going to need a sub data set for each one of these. Let's start with backup storage. I'm going to jump back to my TrueNAS, click in Komodo here, and on the top right, I'm going to click Add Data Set, and I'm going to call this Backup Storage. I'm also going to leave the data set preset as generic here and hit Save. Now, when I scroll back down, I can see I have a sub data set under Komodo for backup storage. Jumping back to the wiki, the next one I'm going to need is Sync Storage. So let's go here again to the TrueNAS data sets, click Komodo, and click Add Data Set. I'm going to name this Sync Storage, and again, leave the data set preset as generic and hit Save. Going back to the wiki, the next one I'm going to need is Periphery Root Storage. Click in Komodo again and click add data set. I'll call this periphery root storage and hit save. The next data set I need is for the database. And in this case, I'm just going to call it DB. So coming back to my data sets, clicking Komodo, clicking add data set. I'm just going to call this DB and hit save. Now when I scroll down, I can see I have all four correct sub data sets under my Komodo main data set. Let's go over to the apps catalog, discover apps. Before we search for the Komodo container here in the apps catalog, just know that MogTech, who are the creators of Komodo, do not maintain or have any affiliation with the one that's found in the app catalog. In fact, if you want to use the official one from MogTech, they recommend you use the Docker Compose file found in the docs that I'm going to link below in the video description. And I will show you after I've done the TrueNAS install and type in Komodo. I now see Komodo here. I'm going to click it and then click the big blue install button. I'm going to set two passwords here. You coming down here to my storage configuration. I'm going to go ahead and change all of these to host path and use the host paths I just created. When I set my Komodo database storage for the MongoDB, I always have to make sure to double check and make sure I have the automatic permissions checkbox checked. Let's come all the way down here and install. In the event you want to use the official install method, we can use a Docker Compose file here. Let's jump back over to the wiki and click the Docker Compose tab. Here we can see the Docker Compose file for Komodo. Let's come to the top right and just click copy, come back to my TrueNAS dashboard, click discover apps, the three dot menu and install via YAML. I'm going to call this Komodo too, because I already have Komodo installed via the catalog. I'm going to go ahead and paste my entire Docker Compose file here. You're going to want to go ahead and check this to make sure yours matches mine. You're probably going to want to use a stronger username and password than just admin, especially here for the database. I'd also recommend making sure your volume mounts match mine. In my case, I have mount tanks configs. If your pool is named something else besides tank, you're going to want to go ahead and make sure you make those corrections up here and all the way at the bottom here and here. Go ahead and hit save to deploy. Let's take a look at cloning a GitHub repo into our local repositories. In this case, I'm going to go ahead and set up a new repo and I'm going to call this test sonar. I'm going to go ahead and create that. On my server, I want to select my local server and I want to select my local builder. My source is going to be GitHub. I'm not going to use any account. And what I want to do is enter a repo. So in our case, we're going to be using the Linux server.io Docker container for sonar. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this back part of the URL directly in to the repo space right here. If I scroll up, you'll see the branch is master. So I'm gonna go ahead and make that change here. And I'm not gonna go ahead and change anything else. It's gonna work just fine. I'm going to save this here and update it and then go ahead and clone my repository. You'll see here the clone did work. And if you want to see what happened, we can go ahead and click this and you'll see all the commands that happened. And I'm going to come back out to repos. I now have a test sonar repo directly on my Komodo instance. Now that I have this repo set up, let's go ahead and use it to actually build a container. Let's go ahead and jump into my builds and do a new build here for test sonar. And when I'm at my config tab, I'm going to want to use my local builder. And in this case, I want to use a git repo. So now because I have a repo, I can select my repo repo test sonar. And I'm going to go ahead and leave everything else here the same. You have the option of doing all kinds of things here. Like if you want to go ahead and set your own version number, in my case, I'm going to use it 0.0.0, .0. but you can set any version you number you want and then have it auto increment every single time you run a build. The reason this is going to work is because it's going to look for a build path of just a dot, which is directly in the root of the repo. When I go look at the repo, we're going to see here, there is a Docker file right here 
which is what it's going to be looking for to actually do in the build. Leaving all this the same, I'm going to go ahead and hit save and then hit update and hit confirm. And now I can go ahead and build this repo. Now this is done. We can see here our build worked. It's on 0.0.1 because it auto incremented our version number. And you can see here the version number has been auto incremented for us. We can come out here to our builds and now we see test sonar has been built. So anytime you have this option where, for example, if you go to a GitHub repository and you don't see a Docker Compose right here, they have basically a Docker file and they want you to build on your own, you can go ahead and just load all that into Komodo and have it run the build for you. Now that we've got our build done, let's go ahead and deploy the container we just built from the repo. Let's click over to deployments here and add a new deployment for test sonar. We're gonna come down here and we're gonna choose our image and we're gonna instead switch that to build and we're gonna find the build that we just made for test sonar. We can come down here and pick an individual version if we want, but I'm just gonna go with the latest. In network mode, I'm gonna go ahead and add this to my existing R stack default so we can see all the other containers in my R stack, but you can go ahead and set a custom one if you want. I have to add the port here. And in this case, sonar runs on port 8989 by default. So I'm gonna do that. For my environment variables, I'm just gonna set PUID of 568 and a PGID 568. So they can read and write if I was going to actually use this container to read and write from my downloads directory. Again, if I wanted to do that, I'm gonna set my volumes here. So for example, I might say it's something like mount tank media to my media directory, just like that. If I wanted to pass through all of my files, I'm gonna change a restart mode to unless stopped. And I'm gonna just save all of those changes there and double click to update. Now I'm gonna come all the way back to the top and hit deploy. So it took less than one second to deploy this container. Now it's running on 8989. And here here is the actual sonar container running that we just built. Chances are you already have a bunch of stacks you've made with other container managers that you want to import into Komodo to use with the software. There's an import tool that we need to run in order to import all the existing stacks to make them useful in Komodo. Jumping over to the wiki, we can see here on section three for import existing stacks, we have a few steps we need to follow here in order to make this work. The first thing we need to do is go into Komodo and add our mount tank stacks directory directly into the container. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy that, jump into my TrueNAS catalog here and jump over and edit Komodo. I wanna scroll all the way down to the storage configuration section. And at the bottom, I wanna add additional storage. I'm gonna use host path and I'm just gonna copy and paste my stacks directory twice, just like that. I'm gonna go ahead and hit update. Step two is to create a new API key in Komodo. So let's jump over to Komodo and log back in. I'm gonna go to settings, profile tab up here, and I'm gonna create a new API key called new key. And I'm gonna wanna copy and paste these two values. I'm gonna leave this right here and go on to the next step because I won't be showing this again. I have to do step three now, which is run the stacks importer Docker container from above. So let's go ahead and go to the stacks importer tab and copy this entire block out. In Komodo, I see my API keys. I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate this tab. I'm gonna jump over to my stacks and I'm actually gonna create a new stack called importer. I'm gonna choose the mode UI defined and I'm gonna go ahead and paste this whole stack here, just like that. Now I'm gonna jump back over to my other Komodo page and grab my API keys and the secret, good. Now I'm gonna go ahead and save this update and I'm going to deploy this container. Let's look at the logs and refresh this page. And we can see here that we are done. Let's jump over to our syncs page now and we can see that the Komodo import has made a new sync. We can see here it's pulling in all of our stacks from our stacks directory on our host network. Let's go ahead and execute this and click execute sync by copying Komodo import into this box and let's execute this sync. When I scroll up, we can see it's running the sync right now. It has run the sync successfully and now I can jump over to my stacks page and see all of my stacks. So for example, we can go and look at at something like Gotify, and we can see here in my config file, it has found the correct stacks path for Gotify. When I go to info, I can see the stack for Gotify, and now I can go ahead and redeploy this image. And now I can go ahead and start this container. Now Gotify is running. Let's go ahead and test to make sure it's on. It's running on port 8001, and there is my Gotify instance. So now I've successfully imported all of my stacks, and I can start, restart, pause, stop, destroy, or create, or do anything I want with all the stacks that I already have on my system. This is an amazingly powerful container manager. UI that obviously can do way more than most container manager UIs can. Portainer is the only thing that comes even close and most of that stuff is locked behind a paywall. So the fact that Komodo gives all of this to you for free is pretty amazing. We definitely want to go ahead and thank a couple of people that help us make this video. One is FoxMD from the MogTech Komodo Discord and the other is Mbex for all the help that they gave us help learning how to import stacks that are already existing as well as just using the container in general. I recommend you guys like and subscribe to this channel. Go ahead and jump over on our Discord if you want to talk to us about some really technical aspects of Komodo. And if you want to thank us personally for this, please buy me a coffee.